Official tells CNN that the gunman entered Building 197 with a small bag that's believed to have carried a disassembled Remington 870 shotgun. He's then seen on surveillance video ducking into a bathroom with the bag and emerging seconds later with the gun. Moments later, he opens fire. We had a report on the fourth floor of a male with a shotgun. Uh, multiple shots fired, multiple people down. As investigators continue pouring over Alexis's life, the trail of red flags leading to Monday's massacre is troubling. August 7th, he calls Rhode Island police, complaining of hearing voices coming through the walls of his hotel room. According to this police report, Alexis said those voices were sending vibrations into his body using some sort of microwave machine. August 25th, Alexis arrives in the Washington area, where he contacts a VA hospital for a second time for sleep problems. September 14th, two days before the shooting, Alexis stops at this small arms range in Lorton, Virginia. An attorney for the gun range says Alexis practiced shooting, and then paid $419 for a gun and two boxes of ammunition. And on Monday, he accessed a Navy Yard with legitimate ID and proper security clearance. In a case like this where you've got so many red flags over a protracted period of time, I mean, it almost seems that this is some, the type of thing that was bound to happen. Even more troubling, Alexis's record while serving as a Navy reservist. Eight instances of misconduct, including insubordination, disorderly conduct, and unauthorized absences from work. It's easy now to look back and piece it all together and say somebody should have known. If you think about it over a long period of time, it's a little more challenging. He was honorably discharged in 2011 and retained his Navy-issued security clearance, which is good for 10 years. The defense contractor he was working for has now pointed the finger at the military for overlooking his misconduct as a civilian and during his service. Looking at the defenses while he was in the Navy, the, the offenses while he was in uniform, uh, none of those give you an indication that he was capable of this sort of brutal, vicious violence. Investigators are now collecting evidence from multiple crime scenes, towing away his rental car, removing boxes of materials from his hotel room, interviewing family members in Brooklyn, all in hope of understanding why he did this. Now we turn attention to the ravages of a devastating flood in the U.S. state of Colorado. Hundreds of people have been cut off by flooding and are still waiting to be rescued days after the inundating water began. At least six deaths have been registered and 300 people remain unaccounted for. Now there's concern in the neighboring states of Nebraska as the flood waters roll to the east. Meantime, the cleanup in Colorado is underway and people are returning to their destroyed homes. George Howard has more. Yesterday, we cut up all the carpet and smashed out most of the drywall and pulled down almost all the insulation. The basement? You see, here's the water line right here. Trashed. If you can go first, yeah. that'd be great. And on his front lawn, there's debris all over. Still, Michael Birdsong considers himself lucky. Last day or two, we've actually been able to turn the corner, but that first 60 hours was crazy, you know. We do know. We were there Friday. Okay. Oh. His wife, friends, and family scrambled to hold back a seemingly endless river rushing straight down their street. Have you ever seen it like this? No, I've, I've grown up in Boulder, and uh, I've never seen it like this before ever. It's just amazing. I'm trying to just keep diverting the water that keeps rising. A muddy, desperate fight with shovels, buckets, and boards. Well, we'll get it, we'll get it. But as it happened in so many neighborhoods, 16th and Iris was no match for Mother Nature. More than 19,000 properties were either damaged or destroyed in these deadly storms. Most residents, forced to evacuate their homes, managed to make it to safety. More than 1,000 had to be rescued by air. And for those who are still stranded in hard-to-reach places, dramatic air rescues happen to this day. Birdsong knows what he was up against. Our basement filled with five feet of water in the first 20 minutes could have been much worse. Thankfully, I have some of the best friends, neighbors, acquaintances, even people I don't even know came over to help. And that's the reason, we're, reason we still have a house right now. 
in the losses column, there's a lot of catching up to do. Put a dollar estimate on this. Uh, what, what would you think? We're already planning for probably about fifty, sixty thousand dollars know, to get it all redone. You know. But there's one thing he found. It was laying right here in the mud. I just happened to see the logo. That makes all the hard work these past few days a little more worthwhile. A ticket from an old University of Colorado basketball game that I went with with my dad. It was 1995. I was still in school there. A precious piece of his own history, surprisingly, washed up by an historic storm. Look out Silicon Valley, a group of enterprising tech designers in Pakistan have dreamed of a nifty new iPad that not only lets you take a picture of your friends, but also lets you be in the picture as well. Here's more on why that innovation is capturing Google's interest. I'm afraid we can't bring you that story. We now take our second break. And over now to sports following the Scorpions convincing 2 0 over Tanzania. The Gambia has moved up in the latest FIFA rankings from 43rd to 39th place in Africa and 169th to 136th place in the world rankings. The Gambia was one of the biggest movers in this month's FIFA rankings. Well, Almod Escalo visited Football House to sound the opinion of the Gambia Football Federation president on the development. Um. Some few development that has taken place over the few days. First, we start with the FIFA ranking. Following the Gambia's victory over Tanzania, we have seen the country move significantly in the FIFA ranking, both in the continent and at the world ranking. Tell us your impression and what do you make of this development? I must thank you, and this is a welcome development, very impressive. The fact is, like we said on the run-up to the match, uh, Gambia's flag cannot be negotiated. Because we are a winning country and a winning team. Um, you would all agree with me that when we won Tanzania, Gambia, um, during this uh, last ranking, was the fastest, if you like, mover to the next stage. And um, this, shows, uh, this is going to fly the Gambia's flag high. And the name of our dear country is flying high. And our ranking in football means a lot to us. 
because it's not only mere statements that the Gambia's ranking has improved, but this would give us the opportunity even in terms of resource development. Because big teams would want to come and play in their preparations to the different competitions. And even sponsors, when you talk about kids sponsors,